Welcome to the Stone Cottage. Today I'm going to be sharing with you about half a dozen different ways that I bring spring into my home and sharing with you some of those little projects and what I do to create a spring look. So I'm going to start with the pillows. Have you ever ordered something online in particular and what arrived was so not what you were expecting. That's what happened with this. Online, this was blue, unquestionably blue. This is more teal. And I do like it. This is all stitched in India. It's a chain stitch, so it's very three-dimensional, and I really, really like that. But I thought I could make pillows out of this. That would be great if it was blue because I decorate with blue and two of my daughters decorate with blue and I thought I could make a zillion pillows out of this thing. But it came in teal. So I put it here on the sofa here and I thought, what am I going to do with this? And you know, on the corner, there was the cushion back there, pulled out that cushion, and I went, huh, that's interesting. The color in this fabric goes with the color of the thread on here. I wonder if maybe, maybe this could be a terrific way to bring a little spring into my very autumnal colored family room. So I'm going to show you how I did that and several other things to bring spring into this back part of my house. That cloth is called Suzani and it's a very traditional thing and they sell them kind of as bedspreads. But this pillow right in the center here, this is in the center of the bedspread. And I simply made a little pocket and used a plain fabric to get as much mileage as I could out of them. And I cut from different places. If you want to go back and look at it, you can see where I have cut the fabric. And I still have enough to make a number of other pillows. And the border, I lined up the border they're edge to edge, and this one is center to center, and more corners, and yes, I keep blankets on my furniture. Well, I should say on Kirby's furniture. This is Kirby's favorite place to take his nap. Right, Kirby? <laughs> you know, whatever. <laughs> but, uh, I also keep one on the other side. Every now and then he sits and looks out the window at, on that other chair because that's the perfect place to watch the birds and the squirrels. So that's the first thing I do is after cleaning my windows, I change out some pillows. Now I decided to use the pink fabric to pick up that pink in the needlepoint chair that uh, my grandmother had done years ago. And of course you might, if you've been around a while, you'll recognize that gold fabric. It's on my dining room chairs. And I also have some cushions for the outside that use that very same fabric. But this is kind of like the living room bringing in more of the yellows and the blues, and here some pinks also. Now, um, those are the colors, the pinks and the yellows and the blues that I used in the living room, if you've watched that video. So I'm bringing that just a different shade, but those very same kinds of colors into this room that is an extremely autumnal room, very, very warm colors, and I just wanted to cool it up and 
that's what we've done here. Now, just some other little things that one can do around. So I'll give you some short, easy things. One of those is bringing in flowers from outside. And I have a number of antique bottles, just little bitty bottles. You can find things different places. Um, and that is a little spirea. And there's my little stone bunny. And another easy thing to do is to add just a touch of some ribbon. And that's just some ribbon that I picked up. Um, you know, they have, always have them half price at Joann's and that was just a little spring-like ribbon to get more of the yellows in here. And you can see that the pinks come through the colors on the books and the cushions. And I've even come over here and put in kind of a, I don't know what color that is. It's kind of faded, that candle, but that very same kind of a pink. It's looking a little red on my camera, but in actuality, it's kind of pinkish. And then a little touch of the ceramic Royal Worcester flowers that had a little spring touch. I will need to put those away, put them up higher when Gracie comes. Gracie's my two and a half year old granddaughter and she will find that absolutely irresistible. And changing out what's on the table. Um, usually I have some flowers there, but I kind of got flowered out today. I've got a lot of flowers all over the place, but uh, my little boy with the bunny. And then this is going to be a strange thing, but when I go to thrift stores, I look for saucers that do not have their cups. And this one actually is hand painted and I got it for probably 99 cents. It's got a little bit of a chip in it, but um, so that was some lady's project. That was a very popular thing to do in, you know, a hundred years ago. And I use those as coasters and I change out my little coasters with the season and then a little bird box on there. Now here, this very much looks like it's outside and it's spirea and some uh, forsythia picked from outside and brought in. And if you look just right, look through the window there, you can see the spirea. So it very much brings the outdoors and the indoors together. So there's my family room. That cushion is flopping over. I think somebody sat there. Somebody meaning my husband. And uh, there, that looks a little better. He doesn't really care what it looks like. Oh, I don't know if you've ever done this before or not, but if you have an Amazon Echo Show, you can go into settings and change um, your, your wallpaper. I guess you'd call it wallpaper here too. And the seasonal one, all of it is spring looking. I tried it seasonal thinking it would give me Christmas stuff at Christmas, didn't. It gave me spring stuff. So it's the perfect time to use the seasonal wallpaper because it's all spring if you happen to have an Amazon Echo in your home. Now in my dining area, I picked this up a few weeks ago at Costco. It's just uh, some begonias, four really nice begonias that I will divide when the weather gets a little bit nicer. We still have a couple of light freezes. The low tomorrow is supposed to be 31 and the low on Thursday is supposed to be 29. So I'm hoping it doesn't freeze because I've got camellias outdoors and they don't they don't like the freeze, they turn brown. But um, some things that I do around here, Dedham Easter Bunny candlestick holders that I pull out every year in the spring. And I picked up a little carrot at Michael's, a little package of a half a dozen carrots, and I thought they would be fun with the bunnies throughout. And here's my second Dedham candlestick holder. And for the silver candelabras, more of the yellow ribbon. And 
These are just faux eggs, but when it's Easter, my uh, grandchildren will be here, so we'll have some plastic eggs with goodies in them, or we'll have some actual eggs if we can make egg salad. Easter egg sandwiches is what my mother called them when I was a little girl. Uh, but uh, just some faux eggs in this little egg holder that I found at uh, a thrift store several years ago. I thought it would be cute for Easter. And it actually is made in Portugal and hand-painted little touches, which I think is very sweet. So this makes a festive little table setting um, during the day. Now I routinely change out what's on top of this marble top table um, to reflect the seasons and I have the cake dome and a little gold target bunny with a couple of Easter eggs. And when I was out today, I bumped into the oak leaf hydrangea and I broke off a little branch. So I stuck that in some water and hopefully that'll leaf. I don't know how many of you have some old Beatrice Potter This is uh, The Bunnykins by Royal Dalton. And here's the story. There's always a story, right? When I was a little girl, my brother had a Bunnykins cup and a Bunnykins bowl. He was two years younger than I was. And I remember him very distinctly sitting in his high chair, eating with his Bunnykins bowl and drinking out of his Bunnykins mug. And I wanted so badly to have some bunnykins and I was just too big. They were told me I was too big and he was little and so he could have it. Um, but I coveted that, I confess. And so when my first child was born, my sister, knowing this, found me some bunnykins bowls and a bowl and cup to give to my first child. None of my children were ever interested, and I was the only one interested in the bunnykins. But these are the only bunnies that I allow for Easter that are dressed. Um, but uh, they need to be very childish. So maybe you have some bunnykins dishes that you might want to pull out for Easter. And again, more of the forsythia and um, spirea, and they have made a fun little arrangement here. And I'll show you how I would do the dome several different ways. One of my favorite things to decorate on is this silver cake platter. It's just a little pedestal cake platter. And these are relatively inexpensive. You should be able to find something kind of like that at a thrift store. I've simply put on a little bit of moss. Um, I find it's much more reasonably priced if you can go ahead and invest in a big bag of it. Um, now, I want to do a Easter kind of a themed decoration here. And I have some grandkids coming and so usually what I start with after I do the moss is some kind of a dry floral rather than a live floral because this is going to be under glass and I'm going to be not paying attention to it. And this one happens to be a little cluster of some sort of a blue thing and I've simply fanned it out a little bit and twisted it so its branches don't show. And put some of that greenery around it. Now I'm going to show you a couple of different ways this can be styled depending on if you want more spring, generic spring, or if you want more Easter. So if I'm doing an Easter, obviously I'm going to put a little bunny in here. I might put on a few Easter eggs. I might go ahead and give him a carrot. Um, if I feel like it needs a little bit more of something, 
Um, I frequently will buy status at um, Costco or Trader Joe's or someplace like that. And I love status because it dries. And this is just a little piece of dried something. So I could add a little bit of extra in there, make it nice and easy. Let's say I wanted to keep it more um, generic. I might put in, take away my bunny and my carrot, I might put in a little bird. And I could go ahead and leave my eggs, that's kind of cute. And um, things that I find around. I find feathers constantly in my yard or when I go for a walk on the sidewalk and I know it usually means the demise of a bird, but you know, that had nothing to do with me. So I might pick up a little feather and I could put a few feathers in there, whatever I'd like. Or if I don't want it to be quite so on the nose, I might just go ahead and use a wicker ball and do something simple like that. Now the, the beauty of the faux greenery is I can always bend it up if I see like a hole or something or if I want to put another little something in there, I can. I can change the flowers, something simple like that, cover it with a cake dome and I put some little yellow ribbon on there, that um, little crinkly yellow ribbon that I picked up at Joanne's Fabrics, 50% off, and I have something kind of fun and springish without being too over the top um, Easter bunnies and that sort of thing. Anyway, take the things that you have, small things, a rock, an a interesting piece of wood, anything you'd like. But I'm going to go back and I'm doing the Easter Bunny thing. So there's my bunny. He needs a carrot to eat. And I'm going to throw in a few eggs. In general, um, work in threes. That's kind of the visually complete look. We tend to be psychologically complete when we do the three. So three eggs, not four, that type of thing. Odd numbers. And put his cover on there. And there's my little domed Easter vignette. Another thing that I do pretty routinely is I redecorate the top of my armoire that I used to hold my china. For every season I redo it and so my yellow bowl went up here and of course the things that are always here at the very very back you see a tray that I have used Mod Podge on and put on. Um, uh, it was actually little guest hand towels and I cut out the flowers and Mod Podged it onto a white tray. And I see things like that, a wooden tray. I see things like that all the time at uh, thrift stores. But we use that tray a lot because we frequently take meals to my son's house and so we use that tray. And this wooden object on the left, that actually is a pipe holder. One of my viewers tipped me off on that. And I always keep Diana up there. And the greenery frequently stays there also. Well, Diana always gets a seasonal necklace. And so she has on some pearls. I had on some whiter pearls, but they just didn't show. So I went with these darker pearls. That's her her Easter outfit, and in this yellow bowl, I have put some wicker balls and a little bit of moss, and 
five eggs. Odd numbers always go with odd numbers. So there's some little eggs up there that I can easily remove um, after Easter to remove the, the Easter look and keep it looking springish. Now, another thing I've done is the greenery stays here and I change out the florals seasonally, either dried florals or faux florals. And these are just a, a little white faux floral that I picked up at the craft store and I cut them in pieces. And I like the white because it contrasts and makes it show up a little bit better. And there actually is some real plant back there too in that bottle. That's a, actually a real plant. But I've changed out. I've had um, some chafing dishes, some sil a silver chafing dish, a copper chafing dish. But I switched over to this plate which has nice spring-like colors. And then some fairy lights. Now another fun thing to do is to bring in hellebores. And I had mentioned last week that we found the hellebores at um, Trader Joe's. And I'm trying to think, I know I got them a week ago. Today is the 19th, I think. And so I got them as recently as the 11th of March. And I have not been back to Trader Joe's, so I don't know if they still have them or not. But the hellebores have been nice, so these are some, some that came from Trader Joe's and some that were already growing in my yard. And this is my little funny teapot that has moss in it that um, I change out seasonally. It just, you know, I used it in the fall and I thought, you know, that's really perfect for spring. So bringing out the spring and making a point of pulling everything away um, from the painting. This is a table that um, I was inspired by Mackenzie Childs and I thought I can learn how to paint flowers. So I painted the, uh, the florals on the table. I, and so I painted that and it's a, a fun spring piece and set with all the birds. That's a fun thing to do. Hope you've gotten some inspiration for things that you can do around your house. And maybe I'll end this with a quick tour through the house so that you can see how the whole house works together, just in case you haven't seen the other video. Here's the living room. And this looks very much like what it looked like um, when I did the other video. But, you know, flowers come and go. And these were some pink camellias. These actually fell off of my tree. They were on the ground. I simply picked them up and put them in a, a little soup bowl and set them here because they bring the pink in. And previously I had daffodils and um, I think it was some rosemary, some flowering rosemary. And we have switched over to daffodil and the pink is uh, the flowering almond bush and some spirea. So we bring that pink, touches of the pink. Here is my mother's little pitcher. One of my viewers said she thinks that's elfinware, which makes sense to me. And my mother always kept little violets in it. Um, and so I went out and picked the, those are actually little white flowers. So the flowers on the bottom, around the edge of the pitcher are porcelain. And the flowers on top, the little white flowers on top are actually real and and then the purple. So just a fun little touch. Other than that, I think everything pretty much looks the same. This was the cabinet that I redid in the other video. But in the library, I have put 
the white orchid to lighten things up. And these needlepoint pillows that were in the living room have been brought in here and they lighten this space up. So it's a little bit lighter in here. And then of course, we've been in here. kitchen. I often change the plates under the fruit and the tomatoes, but the blue and white works quite nicely and I had used that in the winter. And this is the sunniest window sill um, in my house. So this is where the plants go. You can see that my neighbor's daffodils through the window there. Well, I thank you so much for joining me for a quick look at spring and a little tour of the house. And I will take you back out in the garden later on this week to see what's growing because every day is quite an adventure to see what's blooming. Oh, before I go though, I do want to take you to look out the window here in my bedroom. Because the camellia is blooming. And if we have a freeze, just even the light freeze, these beautiful pink flowers will get brown around the edges. They're absolutely beautiful right now. And uh, this is, strangely enough, inside the house is the best place to view them because you have to stand under the plant and look up to see. But here we can look out the window a little bit higher and we can see out. And we can also see if we Put our head just right. The azalea, lower left corner, kind of a salmon color, dark salmon color. That's blooming. And you can see some daffodils and red tulip. He's got a really sharp eye. You can see a red tulip. That little spot of red, that's a tulip. And it looks like a bird. <laughs> Things are starting to bloom all over the place in the garden. And so later this week, I'll take you for a tour outside. Anyway, thanks so much for joining us. Hope spring is coming your way and all of your flowers are blooming. And I will see you next time. Thanks for coming.